اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم In this session we are going to talk about comparing means. The test we are going to discuss is one sample t-test. Now why is it called one sample t-test? Because you have got just one sample at hand and you are comparing that sample with a population. Now t-test and z-tests are commonly used when making comparisons. Comparisons between the mean of two samples or between some standard value and the mean of one sample. In one of the earlier lectures, we discussed that a particular company, an electricity company that produces bulbs, claims that their bulb runs for 1000 hours. So now that is a standard value. In order to check this claim, you will take a sample of bulbs being manufactured by that company. The hours they run for. And then you will add that data into SPSS. And then you are going to compare that particular sample to that standard value. There are two different varieties of t-tests, which are used in different conditions depending on the design of the experiment or nature of the data. Which test are you going to use? It actually depends on the conditions, the design of the experiment or the nature of the data. T-tests are similar to commonly encountered Z-tests in many ways. Both Z and T-tests have the same rationale but use different assumptions, which require a careful selection depending on the requirements. For Z-tests, the population mean and population standard deviation should be known. For T-tests, you need sample. Now, so both the tests, the Z-tests and the T-tests are actually the same. Whereas Z-test is applied on the population, the T-test is applied on sample. Now in many real life problems, while the population means, mean is known, the exact population standard deviation cannot be calculated. So you cannot have the exact population standard deviation or the exact population mean because you cannot assess the whole of the population. You might have a standard value that you associate with the population. But the exact value is always difficult. In such cases, t-tests should be used because you do not have the population mean and standard value. So in that case, you are going to use t-test. Besides, the t-test does not require a big sample size. Many statistics experts or statisticians feel that with a sample size of 30 to 40, results of the t-test are very close to those obtained from the z-test. So you do not need your sample to be in hundreds or thousands for t-test. You can have a minimum sample size for each group should be at least 30. Now there are three different types of t-tests. One sample t-test, independent sample t-test and dependent paired samples t-test. One sample t-test. One sample t-test is used to compare the mean of a single sample with the population mean. Some situations where one sample t-test can be used are given below. An economist wants to know if the per capita income of a particular region is same as the national average. So we've got a certain standard value, maybe $1,200, $1,500, that is the national average. Now I want to check this claim, whether this national claim that, okay, yes, this is the population mean, whether this claim is true or not. So I select a particular sample, maybe from a particular region. I collect data from 30 to 40 people and then compare that sample with the national average. In that situation, you are going to use one sample t-test. A market researcher wants to know if the proposed product will be able to penetrate to a certain level in the households in order to make its introduction profitable. So you've got a particular standard value that you want a particular product to achieve. What you can do is you can collect the sales from one particular region and compare it to that particular standard value. The quality control department wants to know if the mean dimensions of a particular product have shifted significantly away from the original specification. It may be during the production process that maybe machines are acting weird and that's why 
your whole product dimensions are changing. So are they changing significantly? So you've got certain standard dimensions. So you take sample from the product that you are producing and compare those sample dimensions with the standard dimensions. So what are the assumptions of one sample t-test? There are several assumptions that need to be met for one sample t-test to be valid. Some of these are more important than the others. We'll start with the most important and work down the list in reverse order of importance. So the, top, the first one is really important. Moving on the next one and then the next one. Independence. In rough terms, independence means that each observation in the sample does not depend on the other. The key thing to know now is why this assumption matters. If the data are not independent, your p-values generated by one sample t-test will be unreliable. Now how do you test this in independence of observation? Or how do you make sure that yes, there is an independence of observation? We are going to talk about it. In fact, the p-values will be too small when the non-independence assumption is broken. That means we risk the false conclusion that a difference is statistically significant when in reality it's not. If the occurrence of one observation provides no information about the occurrence of the other observation, then we have got independence. So if one observation is causing the other observation, then this is not independence. For example, if I am comparing the per capita income of a region against, the, against a standard value of per capita income of the country. Now the sample that I am selecting, each observation within the sample should be independent of each other. In no way the observation should be linked with each other or dependent on each other. My income or my per capita income in the sample has nothing to do with any other per capita income in the sample. This means independence of observation. Measurement scale. The variable being analyzed should be measured on interval or ratio scale. That is, it should be a numerical variable. Normality. The one sample t-test will only produce completely reliable p-values when the variable is normally distributed in the population. So for normality, you can check the skewness and kurtosis. And if your skewness and kurtosis values are within the range, then you can say, yes, your data is normally distributed. We are going to talk about this in a short while. However, this assumption is less important than many people think. The t-test is actually robust to mild departures from the normality when the sample size is small and when the sample size is large the normality assumption hardly matters at all so how do you use spss to run this test example a business school in its advertisements have claimed that their average salary or the average salary of their graduates in a particular linear is at par with the average salaries offered at the top 5 business schools a sample of 30 graduates from the business school whose claim was to be verified was taken at random. So there is a business school that claims that their salary or the average salary of their graduates is at par with the top 5 business schools. So in order to verify this claim, the researcher has taken data from 30 graduates from that particular school. Now the average salary that they claim that their graduates are getting is 750,000 rupees. In this problem, we want to assess validity of the claim that is made by the business school in their advertisement. We want to know if the average salary of the business school is significantly different from 750000 Now they claim that their graduates are getting a salary of 750000 per year. Is this claim real? In order to check this claim, what we are doing is we have got the data from 30 graduates from that particular business school. So your null hypothesis in this case is there is no difference between average salary of the business school in question, that is uh, the one that is making the claim, and the average salary of the top five business schools. So there is no difference in the average salary of the graduates from the school that is making the claim and the top five business school, which means that their claim is right.
yes their students are making 7 lakh 50 thousand a year because there are no differences the students from the top five business schools are making 7 lakh 50 thousand and this school that is claiming their students is making 7 lakh 50 thousand actually is obviously is right in their claim if there are no differences so this is the null hypothesis and how do you check the assumptions independence of observation the first assumption each observation is independent of each other salary of a particular individual respondent is not linked to the other respondent so for example if i am a member of that that sample my salary is in no way linked with the salary of any other graduate so there is independence of observation measurement scale salary is measured on numerical scale and it is on interval scale everybody is getting some salary so and the magnitude of distance between the two points can be equal or is rather equal so we can put it as interval scale normality Acceptable values of skewness fall between plus minus 2, George and Mallory 2010, and kurtosis is appropriate from a range of minus 10 to plus 10 according to Collier 2020. Values that fall above or below these ranges are a suspect. In this case, the values are well within the range. So we can assume normality. Look at this. The skewness values minus 0.263 and the kurtosis is minus 0.744. Now, how do you get these in SPSS? So, what we are going to do is we are going to go into our sample data. Here are the now here are the salaries of the 30 graduates. Now, how do I assess the normality? What I need to do is I need to go to analyze descriptive statistics, descriptives. I'm going to put this variable into variable list here. I'm going to go to options, skewness, kurtosis, continue, OK. Now here are the details. This is well within the range. Minus 0.263 is your skewness. Minus 0.744 is your kurtosis. It's even less than 1. If you are even, you are, if you, even if you are too conservative about it, even then your data is normally distributed. Moving on, how do we run this test in SPSS? How do we run one sample t-test in SPSS? So we go to analyze, compare means, one sample t-test. So salary is our test variable and what is our test value? That is the standard value that you want to check this sample against. In this case, that is 7 lakh and 50 thousand rupees. So this value is in thousands. So I've just added 750 here just press ok and here are your results how do we analyze these results let's go back analyzing the output now this is the first table that you get your sample is 30 the mean value is 691 and as we can see this is less than the claim that they are making is it significantly less let's look at that so this is the first table, one sample statistic, and this actually gives the descriptives about the test variable, salary, the sample size, the mean, the standard deviation, and the standard error. Now this is the table that is important for us. And if you look here, the second table, one sample test, gives the results of t-test analysis. The first entry is the value of t-test statistic, next is the degrees of freedom, followed by the corresponding p-value for the two-tailed test. Now this is your t-statistic. If greater than 1.96, this would mean there are significant differences in the sample mean and the standard value. In this case, just have a look here. Your significance two-tailed is 0.000. .000. This means there are significant differences in the sample mean and the population mean. So if there are significant differences, this means that the claim that the, the, the business school is, is making may be wrong. But is it actually wrong? How do we know this? We have to look at the mean value. 
is this mean value less than the claim or higher than the claim? So whatever claim they are making is not right. What if this claim was 791.6667? Although their claim had a significant difference, but in this case, we could say yes, they are making over than the claim. They are performing better than what they are claiming. So in this case, yes, your null hypothesis will be rejected. There are significant differences in the average salary of the top five business school and the salary of this particular business school. The test result gives us the T statistics of minus 6.184 with 29 degrees of freedom and minus 1 is 29. The corresponding two tailed P value is 0 0.000 here. If we take the significance level to 5%, we can see that the P value obtained is less than 0 0.05. This means that there are significant differences. One sample T test is significant. Therefore, we reject the null hypothesis. What was your null hypothesis? There are no significant differences in the average salary of the business school in question and the average salary of the top five business school. But in this case, the p-value is less than 0 0.05. So there are significant differences. And this is actually visible here in this table. Their claim was that the average salary of their business school is 750,000. Does their claim stand? No. How do you report the results? Now, business school graduates reported lower level of salary in comparison to the average salary claimed. So, their average salary that was claimed was 750,000. And the business school graduates actually reported a lower level of salary, that is 691.66 with the standard deviation of 51 then found in the population as a whole so this means that you reject your null hypothesis this means the claim of the business school does not stand here's the reference if you want to learn more about one sample t-test thank you very much